Thank you, Jimena, and welcome everyone to another uh, Artist Loft 101 drawing class. And this is our uh, first advanced class in this ongoing series. So I'm really excited uh, about that. And it is uh, a bit of a part two from yesterday's class on value drawing, developing value drawing skills. Yesterday's class was on drawing value. And today we're going to be focusing on drawing trees. So um, seeing some familiar names and faces, it's nice to see so many folks coming back again um, to all of these classes so far. It really warms my heart and uh, I've been seeing a lot of folks tagging uh, me and their, their work on Instagram and I love to see it. So, um, but just to introduce myself again, for those of you who are just joining this ongoing drawing series, uh, my name is Adrienne Hodge and I'm a teaching artist and a practicing artist in based in Austin, Texas. And my personal work is uh, based on dreamscapes, skyscapes. Um, I also do a lot of portraits and I work a lot with calligraphy ink. And I've been teaching drawing and painting for about 12 years to all ages and teaching adults more specifically for the past eight or nine years. I'm um, seeing a lot of people from all over the place. So I'll just give some shout outs because I know that's fun. We've got Casey from Idaho, uh, Stephanie from Orlando, uh, Kira from, or oh, she didn't say from where, uh, Joseph from Minnesota, Joan from Chicago, Tracy from Hollywood, California. Awesome. I uh, wish I could say everyone's name and where they're from. Uh, so I'm going to just dive right in today. Um, one thing I want to just mention that we're going to do a little differently today. Uh, I usually have the example drawing that I uh, used for the, the ad for the class uh, on my desk to refer to um, at the beginning of the class and, and maybe throughout. And tonight or this afternoon, I've uh, left that sketchbook with that image with the tree drawing image that I wanted to show you guys um, at home. So Jimena has the the image uh, that she's going to share on her screen periodically to refer back to. So I'll just let her know when I, I want her to put that up. And then if anybody's interested in that image uh, and seeing it more closely, I'm going to put it up on my Instagram stories a little later this evening. So you can check there on uh, my Instagram stories um, for that image later. But we'll just go ahead and switch the view to my tabletop here. Um, so yeah, definitely tag your work with Make It With Michaels or Michaels Classes or follow me on Instagram at Adrian Hodge Art or you can tag me. I saw some really awesome drapery drawings from last night that several people tagged me in and that was really fun to see you guys had some wonderful drawings. Um, and if you missed that class, it is up on YouTube um, and Jimena can drop the, the links to the YouTube classes in the, in the chat for you as well. Okay, and then also I've got some upcoming independent classes. One is called Mindfulness with Ink and the other one is called Drawing and Painting Clouds. And if you sign up through my shop and use the promo code WEDNESDAY, all caps, you can get $20 off one of those classes. And here's just some more information about where to find me outside of the Michaels Community Classroom. And here's some images of my work. I realize for those of you who are coming back, I keep showing these same business cards again and again, but you can check out my Instagram or website all those things. Jimena can also drop my uh, link tree in the chat and that's where you can find anything else that I've got going on. Okay, so jumping right in today, uh, we're gonna be drawing trees. So I've got a reference photo here of a tree. I uh, believe I put on the supply list for you guys to have your own reference photo of a tree. And if you don't have a reference photo, uh, now would be a good time to search on your phone. You don't necessarily have to go and take a picture of a tree. I'm willing to bet you already have one. If you go on your in your photos app, you can search for 
various um, subject matter, it's really easy to just plug in the word tree in that, that search bar and it'll pull up all of the photos on your phone that has a tree in it or in the background. So if you wanted to do that and find a source image pretty quickly, that would be a good idea. Uh, this is the image that I'll be working from. It's gonna be a little difficult to get both it and my drawing on the uh, screen at the same time, but I'll definitely have a partial view. So um, yeah, and then the supplies, uh, the other supplies on the supply list, were a artist loft sketch pad or drawing pad, the um, artist loft sketching pencils or graphite pencils. I uh, can use charcoal or anything else that you might want tonight. I'm going to be sticking to the sketching pencils and a synthetic eraser. Uh, you also might want to have some tortillions or blending stumps for blending, and that is about it. So any questions about supplies before we move on? Um, I think so far, no. We're good. We're good to get started. Okay, great. And then, uh, so now, Jimena, if you wouldn't mind sharing that, the photo of my, my example tree drawing. Okay, so this is the the example that I had um, advertising for the class, and um, this is a, a tree that's very near and dear to my heart. It's in my neighborhood a few years ago, and it eventually got cut down, but I loved how it was broken, but it was still growing in the middle, and it still had leaves and, uh, you know, went through the the cycles as trees do it was still alive so i kind of thought of it as a metaphor of like bend and don't break you know uh, and i have a really lovely painting of this that is you could also find on my instagram or my website um that I, I did in calligraphy ink that's not quite the same as the graphite drawing here but this was kind of my my sketch for the painting so anyhow um what we're going to be focusing on today is value and texture. Well, mainly value, but we also need to pay some good attention to the texture that we're seeing there. We're also going to be paying attention to negative space. And uh, let's see, I'm just trying to think what else I want to refer to in this drawing before we put it away. Um, sort of similar idea to what we did yesterday with the drapery in that you know, the, the viewer's eye is a magical thing. And I think once you develop a sense of how other people will view your art as an artist, it becomes easier to render things that feel very challenging. Hopefully a lot of you yesterday who uh, had some successful drawings with the drapery noted the, the fact that you didn't have to draw the entire drapery for it to look like drapery. So if you really just hone in on a certain part of certain subject matters, like uh, a tree um, with this drawing, it's not what you might consider fully finished because there's a lot of elements to it that I left very loose and sketchy and undeveloped. Um, but the areas that I focused on the most were where the tree is broken there at the top. So that was where I really developed my value and um, shading and focusing on the contours that are happening right there. And then a little bit more in the trunk of the tree, but even down by the roots, I left it pretty sketchy. So uh, there's a lot that can be accomplished through just focusing on focusing your attention to one uh, aspect of the, the tree that you're looking at. And oftentimes what I, the pitfalls that I see people fall into when drawing uh, complicated things like trees or drapery is that they try to draw the whole thing at once and they get frustrated when it's not happening right away. And so we really wanna break it down to its parts. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. And I just wanted to point out how that drawing is fairly incomplete or underdeveloped in a lot of places, but the moments where it's the most developed are uh, there where it's broken and in the areas around where it's broken. That's where I've developed my, 
my drawing techniques the most uh, in that sketch. Okay, so we'll go ahead and switch back to tabletop. Thank you so much, Helena. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started with just sketching our tree. Um, I'm going to kind of break it down to the anatomy of the tree really quick here. I'm not going to go into to too much about just developing drawing skills because this is an advanced class that assumes that most of us have a pretty good understanding of, of what we're doing. And if you didn't realize it was, was an advanced class, please stick around. You'll definitely pick something up even if you feel like um, you weren't meant to be in the advanced class. So I'm going to start sketching just right now with a 6B just so that you can see my lines nice and dark. And I'm just going to talk about the main parts of the tree. So the trunk of the tree is cylindrical. So we've got a cylinder. So a cylinder is going to have contours, lines, uh, contour lines that wrap around on the horizontal axis in a curved way. And depending on how we're looking at our tree, if we were looking up at the tree, like in this image, I'm looking up, those lines are gonna curve up. If I was looking down at uh, the tree trunk, then the lines maybe feel more like they're curving down. You know, just think about a soda can, how you're either seeing the top or the bottom. So just kind of drawing a split cylinder there just to have a sense of perspective in that regard. And then the vertical lines are going to not be totally straight because this cylinder is going to be twisting and bending and have different things protruding off of it, right? So we just want to pay attention to what the contours uh, are. So on this tree, I've got a little moment where this other cylinder was starting to form where it's been cut. Um, and so just there may be cylinders on top of cylinders, but we still are just making sure that our lines follow the contours of the tree. So we're thinking about our contour lines as we're adding this value. And then we're thinking about uh, the texture as well on the, the tree trunk. And that's going to really um, boil down to the type of bark that you're seeing on the tree. So it maybe is really smooth and then there's just like some scratchy lines in your bark or if the bark is similar to this then we've got these rough jagged moments. So we'd want to account for, you know, a shape like this for that texture. So I'm just kind of mapping out all the different parts of my particular tree here. And then I've got these lovely vines happening on this live oak tree. And so those are really fun. So I would want to put those on last, but as I'm sketching, I want to leave some blank space for those. So as I'm adding my bark, I'll make sure not to go too heavy with the bark and the value of, and texture of the bark in the places where the, those vines are happening. And then I've got some leaves coming off of the tree that are kind of cascading down. And I'm just kind of put, doing the basic shapes that I'm seeing here. So I'm not putting any details necessarily into these shapes right now. I'm just seeing like maybe an oval would be a great way to designate what's going to happen with those leaves a little bit later. Okay, but when it comes to leaves that are far away, uh, this is where I see a lot of people get overwhelmed very easily with their tree drawings is when it comes to the leaves that are distant in their, their photograph or their reference or if they're drawing from life of a tree, they start to still do the same thing they would do for the leaves that are close up. But we have to imitate whatever our, our eyes are telling us and our, my eyes are not giving me that much information like my observational, you know, what I'm observing in this photograph is not a little tiny oval shape for each one of those leaves. I can definitely see these, la these leaves closer up and maybe they're a little more heart shaped than ovals or, or teardrops like I drew, but um, just getting started here. But 
I wouldn't draw a bunch of little, that's going to drive me crazy because for one, I don't see those like that. Uh, what are you guys seeing in regards to this mass of, of leaves that are in the distance in my photograph? Let me just get some answers from you guys of, of how those are appearing to you. Are they appearing very good? Darks and lights. Um, mostly light and dark shapes. Perfect. I can tell we've got an advanced group of artists here in, in our midst because, yeah, we're not seeing um, any particular shape. We're seeing just a mass of light and dark. So we want to make sure that, yeah, abstract shapes. Exactly. So um, rather than drawing those little one little leaf or trying to impose, you know, my imagination on that. I want to draw it more like I see it. And that is more this mass of light and dark abstract shapes. So the way I'm going to get started with that is just do this sketchy little jagged line that kind of frames the the heavier masses of leaves where they feel like they kind of group together. And I know that there are more keyholes um, that I'm going to sketch, but this is where I'm bringing back my, my line. Yesterday with the drapery, I was saying we want to like be as accurate as possible to the, the drapery folds. And that's because it's really easy to get lost if we don't do that. And yes, we could get lost in this tree if we didn't keep it as accurate as possible, but we'll also, you know, get away the pros and cons of accuracy and your sanity. And I think you will drive yourself crazy trying to accurately sketch all of those little keyhole shapes. If you've got the patience for it, by all means, try to get it as exact as possible. But I think just getting the larger masses sketched in uh, like this, is the best way to go and then you look at specific details and you see like oh there's this one moment where a few leaves are kind of like rogue leaves off to the side right here and so you put those in and that's just like putting a bruise on an apple when you're sketching an apple it makes you know it's all in the details and that makes the viewer's eye piece the puzzle together for you and that's what i mean about relying on your viewer like Here's a lovely analogy I love to think about when it comes to um, how people view our art. So, you know, when you're watching a, a show, like a movie of the week type show, maybe not the highest budget TV show, or let's say a soap opera where it's like week to week, they sort of hold the viewer's hand and they lead the viewer down the road and they're like, oh, did you miss last week? Let us fill you in how, you know, this is so-and-so's, you know, their backstory and like fill in the gaps for you. And they just, they spell it out so that you don't miss anything. And then you have an art house film where they assume that the viewer is smart enough to connect the dots. And they're maybe not going to give you that character's full backstory. They're going to give you little details about that character that make you make assumptions about that character that they want you to make so that you understand why that character is doing what they're doing in the movie, right? And one thing that I just love about television in general, it seems like it's getting smarter and smarter. Like there's more assumptions being made that viewers can handle, you know, some higher order thinking skills. Um, so anyway, I digress. But my point is, yeah, when it comes to drawing, like that's kind of coming back to the idea of implied line that uh, I talked about in a, a class a few classes back. But you know, assuming that your viewer is smart enough to like see these little patchy shapes and understand that they're looking at leaves, like even from that, I'm getting a sense of leaves in the distance, right? Okay, so that's our little anatomy of the tree. And I realized I kind of went off on a quite the spiel there, but I'm gonna get started actually uh, sketching the bones of this tree. And maybe as I was drawing, you've already gotten started sketching yours. Uh, I think I'm gonna scooch over this way and put my paper this way and actually 
overall, more of the this side of the tree. But I maybe am going to have to let you guys be my smart viewers that are okay with me not having my my image visible the whole time in this advanced class here. So I'm going to go ahead and just start blocking off my my main shapes kind of looking from what's the farthest away um, and working my way forward. And that goes for the layers of the tree trunk as well. So like I talked about the cylinder shape and then the bark and then the vines and then the leaves. So I'm gonna start sketching my main cylinder shapes that I'm seeing here that are happening in a few different layers. And then I've got this big knot on the front of the tree. So I'm going to go ahead and sketch the entire photograph or what I'm seeing in uh, most of the photograph, but I'm going to focus most of my attention on just one or two parts here. And I'm still just using my 6B, but you might want to get started with your uh, H pencils, like a, a 2H or a 4H, so that your lines are easy to erase if you're running into issues in your preliminary part of your sketch, so that your lines are easier to erase. But I always just, well, I'm using my 6B for two reasons. If I started with my 2H, you guys wouldn't see any of my lines here at the beginning. and You'd be staring at a mostly blank screen for a minute. Um, and I trust my drawing skills enough to be able to lay in my, my bones without making too many mistakes that need to be erased. But that is just my personal preference. So I definitely recommend you start sketching this with an H if you're finding yourself erasing here at the beginning a lot. So I've got my main tree trunks in, but now I want to go ahead and sketch the main tree trunks in the background. I'm not going to draw every tree branch that I'm seeing in the distance here. I'm going to focus on just the most prominent ones. And if I put enough details or enough little sketchy details even, on those, the viewer is not going to feel like there's too much missing. Or is not likely to. So this is where my line about it doesn't have to look like that tree. It just has to look like a tree. And we're going to do that with specific details and little nuances in character, the character of our tree, not by drawing every single leaf and branch on the tree, unless you've got lots of patience and time to keep working on your tree, then you can map out as much as you want. You do want to get as accurate as you can, at least with those bigger branches. That way, things are at least matching up on the, the larger aspects. I've got this one tree branch here that's very foreshortened. So it, uh, what I'm seeing of the tree is very minimal, but it's a, a lot, there's a lot of information missing, but I know that this tree branch goes a lot farther um, than necessarily what it might appear when I just draw that. So the way I'm going to make that appear foreshortened is I'm going to go ahead and put some contour lines in there for myself. And I'm going to have some really big sweeping contours for the part of the branch, or that's really more of another trunk there. 
that's closest to me. And then as it goes farther and farther away, I'm going to start to stack those contour lines, make them smaller and smaller. going to start feeling a little like Dr. Seuss there, but that's very helpful. And we're going to add so much value on top of this that those contour lines aren't going to be too visible. And I can go ahead and put what the verticals are doing on top as well. And if that is very helpful to you, and I know it was very helpful last night with the drapery to a lot of people, uh, put as much of that on there as you want though only issue with doing too much of this with the drapery is that you run the risk of the drapery losing its soft flowy texture and starting to feel more mountainous or more like a pile of rocks. Uh, but with the tree, since we're going for kind of a, a rough edge to the texture, you know, having those, those elevational lines are only going to help. Um, Adrian, as soon as you can, could you um, put the, the picture in the frame so that everybody or whoever's working on it can take a screenshot of it? Oh, sure. Thank you. I think that's probably good. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and I think the glare is maybe happening because I was shifting that paper around. So I'm going to just leave it in one place and stop moving that photograph around so much. Leave it off to the side now that we did that so you guys could get a, a photograph of it. Um, yeah, let me know if you need me to do that again, if anybody else wants it, because it's definitely much easier if I leave it off to the side there. Will do. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and be a little more accurate with these leaves as I add them in now, but same thing as everything else. I'm not going to necessarily draw every leaf there, but I'm going to get as accurate as I can with a few of them, and I'm going to do a little heart shape. Although some of them are kind of turning a little more triangular than heart shaped. And I want to have several of them coming towards me. So getting bigger and bigger. So they're a little smaller up here. And then the ones that are really close to me are much larger. But I'm mostly just blocking those those in for now because I don't want to put any bark or vines in the places where those leaves are going to go. So the vines kind of go under the leaves, but they go over the bark. So same thing. I'm just kind of blocking in where those, those vines are going. So I might erase out some of my contours just to get the some prominent parts of these vines on here, but there's so many of them. I'm really just gonna make, think about what the, the mass of them is, which is some squiggly lines that are falling down the, the tree trunk. But in a few areas, I'm gonna really get my lines nice and crisp and do two sides of the vine so that it's I can really focus my attention on a few of those details. And I'll come back to those over there. Uh, with any drawing like this, that's like very, it can become very monotonous because you're drawing a lot of the same things over and over again. I recommend jumping around, like don't stay in one area of the drawing for too long because you will start to just get fatigued or bored with that particular part of it, unless you're just blessed with a lot of natural patience. I think jumping around is the, the best way to keep yourself interested. You could, you know, if you're working on the vines, 
jump around and do the like a few vines everywhere. The other benefit to doing that is it keeps things kind of loose and creates this flow to your work, keeps your pencil moving the whole time. So you get this like magical thing that happens when we're a little more loose to our approach to mark making. Oh, I think my screen just froze up. Um, oh, my phone is overheating, guys. This only it happens during this class. Don't worry. Um, appreciate patience. Yes. This, and we'll figure it out. Okay. All right. I just kicked my... Um, my AC down a little bit and turned off my hot lamp, even though my lamp was far away from me. Just a moment, everyone. We'll be right back with you. Thank you so much. Um, I just moved several things away from my air conditioner so I can get the air to hit me a little faster. Okay, Patty says that it's perfect because it gives them a chance to catch up, so. Okay, cool. So, um, well, here, I'll be like a cooking show and just keep working, and when it comes back, I'll just be a little farther along in the drawing than I was. That works, too. Also, um, Crystal, your scarf. <laughs> What's that? Crystal loves your scarf. Oh, thank you, Crystal. <laughs> Gotta love thrift stores for, for the bins of scarves. There's a nice vintage store in Austin that always just has like a bin full of cute neck scarves and that's where I got that. Okay, uh, looks like I'm back in business if you wanna, oh, I have to turn on my video again. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's not the best view. Put my nose there for a moment. Hang on. Here we go. One second. Oh boy. There we go. We're back. We're back. Thanks for your patience. Yes, thank you so much. Okay, so. Also, Adrian, uh, before we get back into it, um, if you can show the, the other picture again, I think we caught a couple of people um, off guard and they weren't ready to take a picture. So there we go, everyone. Okay. Thank you. I think that should be okay. Okay. Don't mind doing that at all since I wanna keep it off screen for my, my drawing. All right, so yeah, bouncing around and not getting stuck on any one area. So I'm just gonna bounce around and put my vines in. So as I'm putting these vines, again, it's all about the details. So there's a few moments here where I can really see where the vines wrap around the trunk of the tree. So I'm gonna really get a nice curve to happen there. I'm gonna hold that up to the screen so you can just see that little detail. So just making the vine feel like it's coming from around the tree, like Saturn's rings or something, like it's hugging the edge there. So you want it to kind of disappear off the side and have that slight curve so that it really uh, pushes that, the contours of what's happening there at the, the edge of the tree and how the vines are wrapping around. So just doing that in a few places will make a huge difference. You don't have to do it on every single vine that does that. So I'm gonna watch the clock and when I get to about, I'm gonna just keep doing what I'm doing. Then when it gets to about 4.45, I'm gonna start really putting some value in here and just meet myself wherever I am in this process. But I wanna get a few more details so if you are running into any like hiccups as you're drawing this as far as shapes not 
turning out the way you want or details not layering or stacking the way that you want them to. Um, if you've got the time, I would maybe stop and do a little thumbnail sketch uh, to go back to what we did a couple classes ago and focus on just zooming in on that one particular part that's giving you any trouble. So if you're struggling with how the vines wrap around the edge of the tree right there, um, you know, take a break and just do a little study of what the vine is doing and then go back to it. All right. Let's see. How many other vines should I add? Let me add some of these little heart shaped leaves here as well. And yeah, if something's overlapping, just erase out that area so that you can get your leaves to feel like they're overlapping the vines or if you're not working from my reference photo whatever's closest to you in your your photograph on your tree make sure you're getting a sense of overlap that's happening there okay so I've kind of done everything except for sketching the bark. So same thing with the bark. And I did switch to a 3H because I just realized I'm putting a lot of dark lines in places where it doesn't, the value doesn't get that dark. So hopefully these lines will be visible with a 3H. I think they are. Um, I just don't want to keep going too dark. So I'm just sketching in the darkest shapes that I'm seeing inside of that bark. So just to get a zoom in on that, these little, let's see, let's go back to a device I've been using a lot in previous classes. That's where we look at a certain shape and say, what does the shape, does the bark resemble other than bark? Like how, white, how might we describe the, the shape of the bark? So I'm seeing maybe like little arrowhead shapes like the, the tip of a, a dull knife or a butter knife just repeated, or maybe uh, beans, like a, like, like a pea pod sort of a thing. Like I see three circles that kind of stack and I could maybe see it like bean pods. Anybody else wanna tell me what their bark resembles? Like it's overall shape, macaroni noodles, I like it. Uh, somebody said would be a rectangle. Okay, so yeah, whatever you're seeing there, sketch in just a version of that that repeats in a pattern, however your bark is repeating up your tree, and you want to make sure that that's following the contours. We're not drawing every single one. We're just putting a few of them in there just to get the kind of sense of that bark going, just like I did in the preliminary sketch. And then I'm gonna look at the darkest shadows that are happening in between them and really push some nice crisp lines of shadows that I'm seeing in between. So I see almost little X's or just like squiggle lines that go down in between the bark. I'm not gonna do that for every piece of bark, but just for a few of them. So I'll jump around and do that in lots of places. In other parts of the bark where it's closer to me, it's definitely got more detail and is more like snake scales, I might say, or what else could it be? I'm just seeing larger pieces, honestly, of, of the same shape that I was seeing before. So I can really see those shapes in between. Okay, and then this big knot right here, I wanna get the, the shape of the shadow that I'm seeing here. There's a lot going on. Switch back to a, a B pencil, but just a 2B. 6B was getting a little dark for me. So 
I'm just looking at all the various shapes that I'm seeing in this knot. I also don't want to lose the sense of dimension that I see there, so I'm going to do some curved lines for the contours. It feels a little flat right here, so I'm going to sketch some just diagonal lines there to make it feel flat. So this area definitely feels like a big mess right now, but it's going to come together once I start pushing my value. And then the last thing I want to sketch in there is all those distant leaf shapes. all of those jagged lines. I think that right there is worth the price of admission alone in this free class. <laughs> um, I'm just, that's just my line I say in a lot of classes when it comes to certain token things. Um, but yeah, just the biggest mistake I see people making with trees is with the, the distant leaves not sketching in the mass of dark and light and focusing more on every little leaf there. Or if um, there's maybe something else in the drawing uh, that's distracting from the leaves or in front of the leaves, like a bird or something like that, they'll put that in first and start putting details on that and then get so attached to their details on the bird or you know whatever else might be in the, the drawing or even in painting as well and just not accounting for you know building up the layers and the distance before putting anything in front of those blurrier details because it is it's blurry all we're seeing there is more a mass and that's where we're going to do the art house thing of suggesting those leaves rather than giving every clue as to what we're looking at. And our viewer is smart enough to know what's happening there. So I'm putting a few little keyhole shapes and rogue leaf moments, just in case I don't get too far back to that before the end of the class, I'm still going to have a nice sense of those distant leaves. Okay. So yeah, that looks like a big jungle jumble of lines right now. So now I'm going to get my 6B going again. And I'm going to look at this photograph again and say, where do I see my darkest darks and my lightest lights? If you were really handy in Photoshop or um, if you have an app on your phone, uh, that you can do this with. I've got a, a couple of apps that will do this on my phone. You can even invert everything on your whole phone. Um, invert the, the light on the photograph. If you inverted the light on this photograph, all of the darks would be light and all of the lights would be dark. So we would see all of the light from the sky would show up black and everywhere where it gets solid black in the photo would show up white, right? And then we would have just a reverse of the midtones. All of the light grays would appear dark gray, etc. So what would show up as searing white in the photo if I inverted it would be this big shape of these dark branches that are the farthest away, this moment right here. And if I were to outline that organic irregular shape that I'm seeing right there on that darkest shadow, I would see something like this. So this whole area is nice and dark. And this is where all of those shading techniques that I had several classes back about hatching, cross hatching, stippling, scribbling, or tonal shading come into play. So if I wanted to use tonal shading, I would just fill that in with a nice smooth solid black there. If I wanted to use hatching, I would keep doing building up my contour lines. 
until I get to a solid black. Cross-hatching, I would do multiple lines. Stippling, I would do a bunch of dots or scribbling. But since we're low on time, scribbling is always my favorite one. So I'm just going to scribble in until I get to a solid black using my darkest pencil, which is my 6B in this set. And I'm just going to get this as dark as I can. But I'm also keeping in mind those contours, because especially right here, I want that to feel like it's still wrapped around that moment of the tree. So I kind of scribbled in a way that followed those curved lines. And then now I'm scribbling in a way that follows the vertical line. So even though it ends up being solid black, there's still a sense of the contours and the dimension right there. And same thing on all of these parts. Okay, I'm going to do that again everywhere else where I see it gets to a solid black. So I'm looking at the irregular shape of dark shadows that I'm seeing and I'm putting a lot of pressure on my pencil. It doesn't get solid black all the way across. There's a little bit of light coming onto some bark there. A lot of these it does get super dark. So I'm just going to bounce around and get all my absolute tens on the value scale blocked in. I want to make sure I'm not just filling it in like a solid, that I'm still kind of keeping in mind curving around the contours there so it still feels like a cylinder. And if you need to sketch your cylindrical lines, your contours onto it to help you. Maintain value that is following that cylindrical curve. You can do something like that. And Adrian, again, as soon as you can, um, could you show the chart again, please? Oh, sure. I've already linked your past videos in the in the chat as well for whoever wants to go back and see that. Okay, yeah. Um, so we had a, a class on tonal shading, and then we had uh, two classes that broke up uh, these four shading techniques. So a class on hatching and cross hatching, and a class on stippling and scribbling. And if you go to my Instagram in my little highlights of my stories at the, the top of my Instagram page, I actually made a little worksheet available there. It just says value reference in my story highlights. And you can click on that and see all of the example drawings from that class. And I'll probably just add the, the tree drawing example that we flashed at the beginning of the class um, to, to that story highlight later. So if you miss it today, that's where it will be. So I wanna work kind of quickly here so I can get to other aspects of value, not just my dark. So I'm gonna quickly keep going. And it's fine if you are not where I am in your drawing, it's definitely not a race. And I'm just trying to stay a step or two ahead of you guys. So I'm feeling like some of my branches that I've just highlighted with the, the dark value, highlighted with the dark value, emphasized with those dark values are feeling very similar the way that I drew them. So I want to make sure I get one that's like really crooked in here that kind of deviates from the, the shape that the other ones are, are forming or the lines that the other ones are forming so that it creates a sense of variety. Notice there's a few that are shaped a little differently and I'll just put those in there, but I'm not gonna put every one because definitely don't have the time to draw every branch that I'm seeing.
and see right there, I kind of just started filling that in in a kind of a flat way. Like I just kind of went down the whole side of it and I want to go back and like curve some lines so that I make that feel cylindrical. Um, it definitely, if you, you know, get a little bored with the shading and you're tempted to just shade it all in, in a flat way and not follow those curved contours, it becomes apparent like that you, it just sticks out, I think. Like that one is definitely sticking out to me. So let me, add, if you've got any that are doing that, the way you can make the not feel so flat is to just add a little knot to the side of it and really like push the contours on that knot. Just get part of it to feel really three-dimensional and that'll hopefully make the rest of it feel more three-dimensional. Anytime you have flat lines, what you're suggesting to your viewer is they are looking at something that's flat. So any of your values, if they're added across flat contours, it's gonna make it feel flat. So we've gotta curve it if it's curved. Curve the value if you're looking at a curved thing. Okay. Oh man, that time went by quickly. Oh my gosh, it's already, we got seven minutes left in the class. All right, let me get some medium tones going. How does that happen so quickly? Um, follow the contours of my, I'm just gonna transition all of a few moments where I've got my darkest shadows and I'm gonna just kind of focus my attention in a few spots here. So let me get my dark shadows under a few of these leaves too. Let me get a dark shadow around one or two of the vines probably right here. There's about a medium tone happening under these vines. Make those vines come forward. And then I wanna fill in my mass of leaves. So this is where flat lines can definitely be your friend because this mass of leaves is all so connected that if I just kind of shade over it with my pencil on its side and get like a diagonal line going, I can really lump a lot of these masses of leaves together. And then to bring them to life a little bit, I will just give a few of those jagged edges to that mass of leaves a crisp, more of a crisp line and kind of bounce around inside of there and add some variation to my value that makes it feel a little more like what I'm seeing without drawing every detail. And yeah, a few of those little rogue leaves that are falling off, coming away from the mass of leaves. Okay, I'm just gonna focus on this one trunk right here now. maybe just one leaf, make it come to life. So I've got a highlighted moment. I'm gonna kind of shade in that whole leaf using a B and then an H to get a variation in my value there. And then I'm gonna erase out that, that line, lighter value that I'm seeing, and then go back in with the H. Try to get those veins inside of the leaf to happen. Slot. And if I had time, I would do that to a few more leaves. leaves to bring them to life. And don't wanna forget about the bark. Let me push my value on the bark so I've at least developed some details in 
every element of the tree here. So for this bark that's a little farther away, I'm just going to keep pushing my kind of mid-tone of, of value there and curving my contour lines as I go. And then just kind of push the darker values in between the bark that I'm seeing there. And on one of these pieces of bark that's closer to me, I'll just push the value in between the bark as dark as I'm seeing it, which is almost a 10 on the value scale. And then I'll put some more jagged lines inside of it, and push that texture in that way. So for your closer up bark, you'll really just get in there and put as many details on a few spots, not the whole thing. Like you can do just a few moments like that and then shade in the rest of the area around that bark with a medium value that follows the contours. And then just bounce around and add your, your more detailed moments. Okay, we are almost out of time and that is as far as I got. Let's put my other example back up on the screen for just a moment, Jimena, just to point out how I did the same things in that, uh, that example. So you can see how on that bark, you know, I didn't put every detail in the, the texture that's coming forward the most. I just did kind of a mid-tone and I really pushed these clean, crisp, dark lines at the edge of just a few moments of the bark. And uh, there's just one vine that I kept blank and highlighted there around the broken aspect of the tree. Um, and all those background leaves, I didn't get to much of them. I left it pretty, um, pretty loose there. So, okay, I wanna see a couple of y'all's examples before we go. Um, and this was a really great, um, I, th I thought we got pretty far with with this class. Um, let me see how far you guys got, and hopefully you can keep working on them after we depart here. Barbara, very nice. It's moving, but I see some nice contours uh, around that that big trunk there, and some nice texture on your bark. And Carol. Oh, Carol, look how far you got. So I can tell Carol was using her darkest pencils there to really push that value. Oh, and the contours that are wrapping around those trunks and branches is gorgeous. Thank you. Hi, Ooh, I love the, the patchy leaves. Yeah, really great. And then Crystal. Very nice. And then we have Patty. Oh, that's like a nice knot on a tree I'm seeing. Very good texture there. Karen. Well, I love those contour lines. Yeah, I'm really getting a sense of the three dimensions of that tree as a whole. And Jody. Oh, Jody. Yeah, that the more you push the, the darker moments, the more contrast you're going to create. That's lovely. And, oops, sorry, it's moving on me, um, from Marina. And Morna. Oh, Morna, that is gorgeous. I really love the stylized quality of that one. Oh, you guys are so lovely. John. Oh, we got the hands in there, hand touching the tree. Very nice. And, oops. Um, Alicia. Oh, I just love how that's disappearing into the page. The fade of the, the value is so lovely. Those soft lines. I realized I did not use my tortillions at all. If you wanted to yeah, blend out like um, she's doing there with your tortillions, that's great. I realized with the drapery class yesterday, I didn't um, blend much with my tortillions too much. Um, well, we will be actually repeating this class um, coming up soon in uh, September. So if anybody wanted to join us again, I'll probably use the same uh, reference photo 
and um, we're going to repeat this advanced drawing trees class. So hopefully you guys will come back for the encore presentation of it. Um, thank you all so much. We went a little over time, but I enjoyed seeing all your examples. Tag, make it with Michael's and Michael's classes if we didn't get to uh, spotlight you. Thanks again. Perfect. Thanks, Adrian, for another great class. And thanks, everyone, for joining us today. See you in the next class. Bye. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.